Welcome to the Spotlight Series. I'm your host, Scott Nerney. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this information to everybody out there. Definitely have a great guest for you today. Beth Ann from Bellamente Counseling. Welcome to the Spotlight Series. Thank you. Give us a little background of yourself first. Sure. So um, my full name is Beth Mancini. Um, I was actually born and raised not in Rhode Island. I was oh, no. born and raised in, I know, right? Forget it. Cancel the show. <laughs> Um, I was born and raised in Massachusetts. Okay. It's a town um, called Sutton. Not a lot mm-hmm. of people know it, but when I tell them that it's like in the direction of Worcester, Mass, then I get the nod of like, okay, I know where that is. Lots more um, cows and farms in Sutton than the city of Worcester. But um, I was born and raised there. I actually got my master's degree at Rhode Island College. So that was my first introduction to really anything in Rhode Island. Um, and I got an in, uh, like a a lower tuition rate because at the time, 20 plus years ago, dating myself, I know, um, they were the closest school offering a master's degree in social work to where I lived in Sutton. And so that was helpful to have a nice little after, oh, I lied. I went to Salve Virginia University in Newport, Rhode Island. That was my first experience in Rhode Island and then followed up with a master's degree program at Rick. Um, anyways, I was, I date, I'm dating a person for the last 15 years whose name is Steve and, uh, we met online about 16 plus years ago. And so he lives in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. And so after dating for a period of time, I moved in with him. And so I've been a resident, a resident of Woonsocket, Rhode Island for a really long time. And now I more like consider myself a Rhode Islander because that's kind of a long time to live in the city. It is, yeah. Well, once people come, they usually stay and people are born here never leave. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I don't intend to move forward. Um, We've lived in two separate, you know, residences in Rhode Island, in one socket, actually both in one socket. So, yep, I am a one socket person. Right. Um, Yeah, I love Rhode Island. So you have a counseling center called Bellamente Counseling. Yeah. So give us a little high level of the organization. Sure. So um, if you don't mind, I'll go back just a tiny bit further. For 21 years, I worked for an organization out of Worcester, Massachusetts. It's known as Worcester Medical Center, but it's actually owned by many people, meaning over the 21 years that I worked there, national companies would continue to come, kind of come in and out of buying it. But in my 20s, I started out working as an intern on their psychiatric unit, which was how I really got to love working with people with um, mental illness. And I knew right in my 20s, well, my high school teacher from psychology at a school in Worcester, all girls, Catholic school, will tell you that actually, no, you were getting really good grades specifically in psychology in high school. And you said, one day I'm going to open my own counseling center. I don't recall that, but um, Miss Pam Reedy, my high school um, teacher, says that, and of course I believe it to be true because I do love working with people. So um, I worked at St. V's, St. Vincent Hospital, or the Medical Center, as it's known now, for 21 years, and then they sort of eliminated my position. We'll just call it that. Obviously, I was shocked. I had worked my way up to becoming a regional director for behavioral health. So at the time, right before I opened Bellamente, I was um, commuting from Woonsocket to Natick and Framingham and to Worcester. So I had quite the commute, but um, I had a, you know, a good salary and all of that. And I was devastated. So just on a human level, just putting it out there for folks that sometimes when you feel like you um, have been given some really terrible news and have worked really hard in an organization and kind of worked your way up, Um, it doesn't always mean that that's kind of like the end of the road. For me, it was literally a blessing in disguise um, because I had a six-month severance to kind of think through my next steps. I worked at a few um, smaller, actually large agencies, but community agencies, Community Care Alliance, which is also in Woonsocket and a little bit of everywhere in Rhode Island, which was a great working experience. Um, And I worked for a smaller agency out in Worcester doing outpatient work as well. And the shorter version of that is I quickly learned like, okay, I miss my roots. I really do miss meeting one-on-one with people and helping people one-on-one. I had moved 
not patting myself on the back, actually in a negative way, I moved all the way up in the management chain that I was really separated from my true passion, which is, yes, I feel I am a good manager, of a good leader, but I really love to talk with people like this, like one-on-one -on -one and really help people change their life, you know, not just manage and payroll and that kind of stuff. So my boyfriend, still currently, um, is very entrepreneurial and was like, why are you driving an hour in every direction trying to look for another six-figure, you know, job? Why don't you just do your own thing? So I literally drove around one socket um, and I called three different counseling agencies, really small ones. And one lady called me back. Um, she since has passed away, which stinks, but she was my mentor um, in this industry. And I said, hey, I'm looking to start my own thing and I just want to rent some space somewhere. She said, perfect. I have a, um, a place in another area in Rhode Island, but I'm only at that office three days a week and one socket is open every other day. So why don't you just come in, start seeing people. I'll help you get paneled with some of the insurance companies on my complete own, like nothing to do with her. Um, and she helped me like learn ha the industry that I didn't understand, you know, how to um, get credentialed. And then I just started advertising in little local papers, you know, a picture of me and I just called it Beth Ann Mancini, DVA, Beth Mancini. Um, hadn't picked a name yet and people started to call and I started seeing people. And one day, months later, six months later, she left me a note on the desk that I was using and said, Beth, you are doing awesome, but you're now like officially paying more than half our rent. And I really think you should go try to rent your own space. So we moved to another location, just me. And then so many people were coming that I was working six days a week, sometimes seven, if I'm being honest. And I was like, let me just put an ad on Indeed and see if I can find like one person that can help take the load and I can get back to a little bit more of a work-life balance. I did that. I found someone named Jamie. She joined. She since has left, but she was with me five plus years and we're only six years in. So that was the start of realizing that there was a huge need for another agency local to people of all different types of um, mental health conditions and concerns of all different ages. And so I said to Jamie, why don't you just start with me and do the overload and the overflow that I can't not don't want to, but you know, who wants to work six and seven, you know, days, you can burn yourself out and then you're not helpful to those you're trying to help. So she joined and then I won't go through the boring details from there, but it just snowballed. Let's hire the next and the next and the next. And then here we are. Six years later, um, there are 28 or so of us in this exact moment. Of course, that number changes. People get their license. They move forward. They want to start their own thing. Um, or we're always hiring, um, you know, looking for qualified candidates. So right now in this moment, we have 28 of us. It's crazy this to me. But again, it really just shows that there is a need. Um, you'd be surprised if you're not in the industry to hear how many people call our intake line uh, crying, just crying, not even because of their circumstance, but because you're like the fourth agency that I've called. And thank God someone even picked up the phone and returned my call or text. And the fact that you have openings and have a plethora of people to choose from, um, not saying every second of every day we have an opening for someone, but we very frequently have openings for all different, you know, insurance because we have so many folks. Again, not all full time. I don't think I mentioned that, um, but for sure, we do have a variety of counselors these days and three administrators, a billing company. I mean, it's really changed from Beth Mancini doing business as me to the Lamente Counseling um, we have an office in Woonsocket. That's our primary location. It has nine offices and an administrative office, and that's where I, too, um, see clients. And then we, a few years ago, realized that there was a need more south of us. We're getting a lot of calls, including clinicians who lived more south than us. Um, so we opened an office in Warwick, and we have four offices in one location in Warwick on Jefferson Boulevard. So we are definitely growing and I, my goal isn't to just grow to grow, like that's lovely, but the goal is as long as we continue to get calls and we can continue to help more people, yes, there isn't an ultimate like plan to have 20 more offices, that's just not it for me. I'm not passionate really about that part, I'm more passionate about, yes, if we continue to put people on a wait list, let's not do that. 
let's open another area, you know, that is local. And I think um, it's important to also mention that we offer telehealth. Of course, I think for a lot of agencies that started around the time of COVID when it was like, whoa, what are we going to do? People cannot safely come in and meet with us. Um, and so most people switched to just working at home. I supported that. I moved to working at home. Um, but it's stuck and the insurance companies now have really made it easy for us to continue to offer services. So you could be anywhere in the state of Rhode Island and in certain areas of mass, depending on your insurance, be fitting in the comfort of your own home, for example, in Newport and really not want to make the drive out to Warwick and can be serviced. So we're really grateful that insurance companies really stepped to the, up to the plate. Um, for example, you used to need to get a prior authorization from them to see someone uh, who was, you know, um, incapacitated and unable to come into the office. These days, you don't have to do that. And almost every insurance will allow for a telehealth session, which is either a phone call or a video session. So let's talk a little bit about the types of situations that you deal with. Sure. Obviously, for HIPAA, we're not going to use names yeah. or give details. Yes. But um, if I name some of the services that your office works on, this isn't a full comprehensive list, but sure. some of the big hitters. Okay. Uh, give us an idea of why kind of why people come in for this area okay. and what your office can do for them. Okay. So let's first talk about family counseling. Okay. Sure. So um, we see a lot of folks who might be going through a divorce. We see a lot of folks where one parent has full and complete guardianship, but yet would like their children to still have a relationship with the other partner, even though they're maybe, you know, living full custody with someone else. Uh, we just see regular people, like you don't have to have a, an oh my God kind of crisis. You could just um, be a mom who's two siblings, you know, children, siblings. They're just not getting along. And it's like we've tried everything we can and we've bought every book and we've read every Kindle and we don't know what else to do. So um, it can also be court ordered. You know, someone maybe doesn't really want to go, but the court is saying, in order for you to save reunification with your family, you need to do it under the supervision of a professional. So a lot of people call just for general stress regarding families. And then families doesn't always mean just children and parents. It could be a grandmother and a child. It could be just a brother and a sister. It could be adult family members who um, maybe mom died 10 years ago, dad recently passed away, and now there's um, an estate issue or just we're not getting along and we miss the fact that we used to have family gatherings and get together. So a lot of times I think people think that counseling is for I'm in crisis, almost like ah, we're at the bitter end. Oh, what are we going to do? And sadly, we do get a lot of calls where people are really upset on the phone and they feel like this is the end unless I get help. Our suggestion for everyone, including all the categories you mentioned, is really to call at the start of when you're feeling a little bit like, hmm, this seems like a little bit more than I can handle on my own. I probably could use a little bit of help. It, it shouldn't be negative, you know. A whole other conversation probably for another day is there's a, there's a huge change around the stigma of mental health in the positive. You know, there are definitely more people, say now than 10 years ago, are more comfortable being Oh, yeah, I have a counselor. You know, I personally have had a counselor like in my life. Um, I went through a divorce many, many years ago. And although it was my decision to be divorced, I was kind of a mess about it and wanted to get some support from someone that wasn't a friend or family. So um, nowadays, I feel more confident that people are OK saying I have a counselor and I'm not going to say proud about it, but, you know, um, happy to discuss it or disclose it and less embarrassed. But we're nowhere near where I wish we would be, you know, by way of, of seeking help. So, for example, if you're a family out there and you're like, oh, that's an embarrassing call to make, my voice would say, you have no idea how many people call who aren't in crisis necessarily, but just are looking for like three or four counseling sessions of guidance. Like, how do I get my boys to get along? Or how do I get my um, dad to get off my back about this? Or... Um, Again, reunification, stuff like that. So some of the family topics like that, also marriage counseling, um, or if you know you may be, I get this all the time because my specialty is couples, um, people that know maybe that they don't really want to be with their partner anymore, spouse or just partner, um, LGBTQ, whatever it is, 
um, they come into counseling and people always think of couples counseling as, oh, you're going to help us to get like back together and we're going to like fall in love. Yes, we certainly can do that if both people are on the same page or over time become that. But some people come in already knowing like we don't want to be together anymore, but we want to be friends or we want to raise our children still. And the kids aren't in counseling. They just want to learn as adults, as part of a family, how can we best go about doing this and still keep our friendship intact so that we're we're kind of being disrespectful to each other these days and it's not nice and we don't want our children feeling that, you know, brunt of that. We want to show them that we still love them and also some of them don't have children. They just together are adults realizing, yeah, we want to do this in a more peaceful way. So we get calls like that for families. Yeah. So that wraps up the, the human side of it, but let's talk a little bit about the, you know, one of the biggest issues in the area now is substance abuse. Absolutely. That's huge. So at our practice, we don't have anyone that can prescribe medications. So that is, needs to be clear. Um, however, we work very closely with a lot of agencies who do. So you can still become a client at Bellamente Counseling if you're seeing a psychiatrist or a um, nurse practitioner and receiving medications for sleep, for anxiety, depression, bipolar, elsewhere, as long as that agency doesn't have a rule. For example, there are very few, but there are a few um, agencies who say, if you're going to receive medication at our agency, you also need to receive counseling here. To be honest um, with you, that methodology and that thinking is going away. And truly, I believe it's because they can't keep up with the volume of appointments. So sure. we can certainly help people who have substance abuse. And we do have a few staff out of the 27, eight of us who are specifically, I'm not going to use the word credentialed, but um, have an area of expertise, went to school specifically. Some have something called a CAGS, which is they went to school to get a certificate. Um, sorry if that sounded like it did, it makes sense. Uh, it is a certification that specializes them in substance abuse counseling. So not every person, like myself included, needs to have a degree or certificate to help someone with a more minor to moderate degree of substance abuse. However, if you are open at intake with us, not everyone is, and that's okay. But if you are open with us at intake and you let us know, I have a significant problem and it is X, Y, Z, something significant, heroin, cocaine, um, versus something like alcohol, marijuana, cigarettes, and some people don't think of that as even an addiction, but some people do identify themselves as like, yeah, this has gotten really out of control for me. So most of our counselors can treat many people with different degrees of substance abuse. And we absolutely, with any of these topics, if we feel that our counselor or anyone at our practice isn't suitable and really doesn't have the right, you know, degree to help you, we would refer you out to an agency who does. So we could help almost anyone, but we also know our limitations and we're not going to keep you as a client just because if we really think, you know what you need to be doing beyond AA and coming here and uh, whatever is, go into an inpatient program, get clean there, get on some medications to help with that, and then kind of rejoin. So okay. we do see a lot of people with substance abuse, but we can't do court ordered kind of things because we can't test people's urine and we can't prescribe medications. So we know kind of, and we will share that with people if they're open to intake, what our level and what our capacity is for it. Okay. And one of the things that's getting a lot of press over the last few years uh, is transgender LGBTQ. Yeah. Uh, do you work with folks for that as well? We do. Um, so Thunder Mist is an agency literally down the street from us, you know, within a mm -hmm. mile. Um, and they happen to have a very large medical clinic for people who are transitioning. Not necessarily the surgery component, but the counseling component, medication component. Um, and therefore, years ago, we started getting a lot of referrals just based on the fact I think that we do have a good reputation, but also we are very local to where they were. And they used to say, call and say, like, we only have one counselor. And that's a lot for our program. And there was a huge, um, you know, interest outpouring again people, I hope, feel less of a stigma to talk about things like that. So um, for a period of time, I am not a trans person, but I had run a transgender group because we didn't have anyone, still don't currently, at least that I know of that's open, that, that, that's open about it, um, who works at Bella Mente, who is a trans person. But because there was such a need, I was running a group, and um, this is going back two plus years, um, but it was 
wonderful. Um, people could either, you know, pay X dollars to drop in, so to speak, a session, or their insurance would cover it for a very nominal fee or zero dollars, depending if someone has Medicaid, for example, it's usually, you know, no fee whatsoever. We would meet in our conference room um, and, you know, have different topics. Again, I'm very open with people. Like, I'm not a part of your community. I'm not here to anything but um, help the conversation to happen. And we would have, like, a topic of the week, so to speak. Um, it was really great for social um, socialization, meaning trans folks wanted to know other trans folks. And they didn't want to just necessarily share it with the general public or, you know, my neighbor down the street. So they would come to the group. Um, there was about 10 of us at one time. And it was nice for them. If they wanted to, it's not a must, but they would exchange information. They could text one another. They could, hey, let's um, go bowling tonight and kind of do their own thing. Our group was a psychotherapy group, but they too would get together kind of on their own because they were going through experiences that obviously I cannot say. And I always say this about counseling, and I firmly believe it. You know, not every counselor can experience every single thing in order to help people, right? But we have all experienced something that will help us relate, right? I might have walked into a room and felt like a minority in a certain situation, even though in a lot of situations, I'm not a minority. But so I can relate to feeling like, oh, this feels different. Or um, maybe many of my bosses were men in the past and like, oh, now I have a female boss or I am a female leader. And that is a little bit different, you know, um, positive, but also, yes, it's different in that you can experience that. So we currently, and I definitely don't want to give you dates and times because I'll probably get it wrong. But we just more recently started to run two LGBT groups. One is virtual and one is in person. One is our, uh, in our one socket office and the other was virtual. Um, don't quote me. I think it was focused for those two groups on an adolescent specific age group. Um, we do get a lot of inquiries. They don't often turn into people coming to the groups, which is kind of unfortunate. Every year in the last three years, I think, we've been to Pride and we have a, a group there, uh, excuse me, a booth there. Um, and so we're, you know, giving away stuff, having conversations with people. Yeah. A lot of people at Pride are much more open than maybe someone who isn't even out of the closet, so to speak. Um, and so we have a large volume of people that will stop by and just be like, oh, I love to hear that you're openly running groups. And yes, we also just treat people. You don't have to come to a group. You don't even have to share your LGBTQ if you don't want to, right? Like during our intake, we do ask questions about um, race and religion and sexuality and whatever, because we want to learn about you before you come in. Not everyone is comfortable. Some people come to us saying, I don't know. Um, I don't know what my sexuality is. I've experienced this and I've experienced that. And can you help me maybe figure this out? Or maybe I am a trans person, but I haven't been able to share that with my mom or my dad or my sister, you know, and I want their support, but I'm nervous because they're maybe super religious and not going to accept me. So we for sure do one-on-one -on -one counseling with all of these folks. Um, and we offer groups for people who kind of want more of a social atmosphere. So you kind of touched on it. Let's talk a little bit about the process. Someone picks up the phone. They say, I have blank issue. Yep. I want to come in and talk to someone. So Talk through the visit the office and what happens before they meet with an actual counselor. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have an intake line. I can say the number if you'd like, or we can save it for later. But it, on our website, also, it's posted there. Um, we have an intake line. You can call. You can text. It's literally to that same intake line. Or you can shoot us an email from the website. And you will receive a call usually within 24 hours, business hours. So our agency is technically open seven days a week, meaning we have counselors who choose to work on Saturdays and Sundays and of course, Monday through Friday, virtually. And in both offices, we have a fairly busy schedule, weekends, mornings, noon and night. But our intake folks are Monday through Friday, nine to 5.30 kind of thing. So anytime within that time frame, if you write an email, send a text or call, you'll get a return call within 24 hours, usually less. People used to say to me, my God, I just emailed myself um, we have a few psychology todays out there which is also how people sometimes find us and within 10 minutes i could be watching survivor on tv but i'm on my phone too and i'll just write like hey so glad you reached out someone on monday will you know reach out to get your information so that's how it starts you would reach out to us of course because we don't know how to find you and then um there's a list of questions that over the phone either text email or phone call whichever you prefer we will ask you 
really general demographic, your name, your age, your street address. Um, at some point, we need some financial information because a lot of insurance companies have co-payments and deductibles. We never ask anyone to send that in a text. We want you to call us and we can enter it. Or once you join our portal, which we use a portal called Simple Practice, you don't need to be familiar with it. It's very easy. We'll send you a link welcoming you to Bellamente, and then you can go ahead and enter your date of birth, your address, your um, reason for wanting to join the practice. We do ask questions about why you're wanting to join because, again, we have a wide variety of counselors, younger, older, every age, sex, and gender that you could think of, religious, many different types of religions. Um, we don't in this moment. We used to have a few Spanish-speaking um, counselors. We're looking to hire more, but we don't in this moment. However, we want to gather as much as we can from you, either on the form that we're sending you online or on that call. So my suggestion is to be as open and honest as you can. Sometimes people just don't feel comfortable, and that's okay. Once they meet with their counselor that first time, so to speak, they will, you know, hopefully be much more open about the reason for joining. So we need a certain amount of information. We want to know things like, do you want to be seen in one socket? Would you like to be seen in Warwick? What day of the week? What time works for you? Or would you like a telehealth appointment? We have counselors who are only in one office or the other or telehealth. So we're trying to narrow it down. Do you want a male, a female, what office, what time, all of that. Um, for minors, of course, the parents or guardians do need to call and do need to physically sign. Everything can be done electronically, so there's no sending you paperwork in the mail or anything like that. Um, and then the intake person will give you the date and time of your first appointment, the name of your counselor, and their phone number. And then from there on, you either log on to your link at the day and time. You'll get an email with the link or you come to one of the offices and you'll be greeted and welcomed. Um, and then from there, you start your sessions. If it's not a perfect match, which can happen, it's very rare, but it can happen where we always say give it at least two or three sessions. But if you know session two, oh, this just isn't the right fit for me. I thought maybe this person would. Um, you can even go online ahead of time. For example, our intake might say to you, so these are the two counselors that both have appointments in, say, the one socket location at this date and time. Then they can go read the bio and see a little picture of the person on our website and choose from there their own person. But I'll be honest, sometimes there isn't a choice. And really, because you have, say, Blue Cross insurance and you want to be seen in Warwick on Sundays at 10 a.m., I might only have one person available for you. But if it doesn't work out within a few sessions and you just feel like it's not the right fit, it's normal. Not everyone is best friends with everyone. And this isn't a best friend relationship. It's professional. But my point is just call back intake if you don't feel comfortable saying something to your counselor. Like, hey, you know what? Thank you so much for setting me up with so-and-so. They seem like a really nice person, but I need someone more blah, blah, blah. Either direct or warm, you know, whatever it is. I'm older, younger, you know, oh, I didn't know you were going to set me up with someone that age really was looking for someone that like has been married and divorced before you have that you know we're normal we're very um open we're warm we're very our, our agency really is down to earth we want people to come and feel comfortable walking in you know as a matter of fact i'm more a little formal than i really would be in real life because you know um i am a professional person however i allow the staff to wear jeans no rips no logos um no just regular t-shirts but we want it to be people are properly groomed and looking nice, but also just be comfortable so that when our clients are coming in, not saying they don't also look nice, um, they don't feel like, ugh, I'm talking to this utterly professional person and I can't just be neat, you know? We want them to kind of like do what we're doing, just let our guard down and no judgment here. Just we want to help a little bit of everyone, you know, with whatever they're experiencing. So give the people information about how they would take the next steps. Sure, absolutely. So um, do you mean like the website, the, phone number? Sure. Okay. Um, the phone number for intake is 401-999-8181. Um, the website is literally the name of the company. It's long to type, but www.bella, B-E-L-L-A, mente, M-E-N-T-E, counseling.com. And again, on the website, you'll see all of our photos, a little bit about our background and education, a little blurb about the kind of clients we are specialized in working with. And then there's a link there that you can click to become a client. And you can also change your mind, right? You can sign up, have a phone call, ask some questions. And if we're not the right agency or fit for you, that's okay too. We'd rather you call and ask the question and say, I don't know, I'm not sure. And we can help you through it. Um, 
So those are the primary ways to reach us. Well, I wish you a lot of luck, especially in expansion of Warwick. And you know, it's it's refreshing to hear a medical or a psychology office that actually has appointments. These we days. have a plethora of appointments. We just hired three new people in the last couple of weeks, um, just trained recently, and they are wanting to get their get their volume up and really help as many people as they can. So thank, thank you so much. much. I appreciate the opportunity thank to be you. here. Okay.